wise women this is emily here from wise woman witchery and i am here today with stephanie mandano manoyan who is a psychic medium and she is Hi. going to share with us um kind of about her journey and her work and i'm really excited thank you so much for being here today thank you for having me yeah so um i i mean you're a psychic medium this is what you do right this yes. is your job so, <laughs> so I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about like how you found your way to this path. Like when did you start knowing that you had some abilities? Yep. I was nine years old and I remember it vividly. I was sitting with my father having a conversation with him and I had a feeling go through my body and my father said, I just looked blankly at him and I said, something bad's going to happen tomorrow. And of course, my dad was joking around saying, did you get a bad grade in school? And I said, no. I said, something bad's going to happen tomorrow. And it was a feeling that I can't explain. And uh, the next day, my grandfather passed of a heart attack. So I knew, I knew then that I was honing an ability. Um, obviously, nine years old, I didn't really know what it was. You know, so I spent a lot of my childhood wondering what was going on with me, you know, feeling emotions of everybody and picking up, you know, senses from everybody. And I didn't understand what was going on until um, my late 20s is when I really honed and opened up my gift. Okay. And so did you, I mean, did you talk to your family about this and, and they, I, what was their response? When I was younger, I kind of, you know, held it all in a bit. And okay. I didn't know what was wrong. Um, but obviously, as I got older, I talked to them about it. And it, nothing but positive energy from everybody. So it was really, really good. And um, I started to see my mentor, uh, Karen Hollis. And she's in Connecticut and Rocky Hill. And um, she kind of taught me how to hone my gifts and to hear spirit, see spirit, feel spirit, and um, be able to use it to help other people. Okay. So how do you receive information? Like what, it, I mean, you just named all the things, but is that yeah. how it comes to you or is there one that is stronger than the others? Okay. So, um, what I do is before I have an appointment with somebody, I will put a write, writing pad in front of me and I will say the person's name constantly in my head. Um, I write down whatever and anything that comes to my mind. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's, um, your inner mind, inner hearing. So I'll write that down before the appointment. When the person arrives to the appointment, I ask the male spirits, well, I ask my guide Ariel to come in first to make sure everything's okay. And then I ask the male spirit to come in on my left side and the female to come in on my right. So now the feeling that I'm getting, if it's male, let's say you bumped your funny bone. That's the feeling I'm going to get on my left side and for a male and on my right side for a female. Mm -hmm. And then I'll ask my spirit guide if it's okay for them to come through and then they'll start to come through and I can hear, feel, smell, sense, um, basically every single auditorial thing that you can imagine I can feel. Okay. And, and then you, I interpret that. Do you see, I mean, do you have vision? I do. Yeah, I okay. do. And it's really, really vivid when I meditate. Uh-huh. It's, you know, it's, um, you can see your third eye blinking back at you. Mm-hmm and opening and closing and opening and closing and the colors and then I'll see spirit. And um, I actually contacted my grandmother last night and it was pretty cool. And she had some stuff that she wanted to say. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, it's not as if I'm talking to you right now. It's a little bit different. It's almost like a puzzle that I kind of have to put together of signs and symbols and, and kind of figure it out, which my inner knowing does that now because I'm trained. Right, right. So sometimes you might have a symbol or a, a vision come through and it's not clear what it exactly means. And you have to translate it through what, what you've created as your list of symbols for yourself. Yeah, um, correct. I also ask them, um, you know, when a spirit does come through to me and then they acknowledge that it's male or female, I ask them how they passed, you know, yeah. to give, you know, my reader validation. And let's say it was a heart attack. My left arm's going to go numb. My chest is going to start hurting me, but it's not the pain that they felt, but in a sense, they're kind of just showing me of what they went through. If they had a breathing tube, I'll start to lose my voice. So I'll say, you know, it's something with the, tra the trachea um, when I'm, you know, giving information to customers. Uh-huh. Okay. So you do have the physical experiences, but it's not necessarily debilitating in the way that it might have been for the person who experienced it. Right. It was when I was younger until, okay. until I was able to learn how to ground myself. Uh-huh. 
and, you know, figure out what is going on with me. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about grounding? Like what, how that plays a role for you and how you personally do it? Yeah. So for grounding, um, every day I basically thank Archangel Michael, Mother Mary, God, Jesus. I thank my spirit guides for helping me through everything. And then I'll do um, meditation or my ancestors as well too. And um, I'll do a meditation and I'll just fill the whole space around me with a white light mm -hmm. and just go into my meditation, which, and actually I have a spirit now. <laughs> validating like yes you need to do that more but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I ground myself um especially if I'm working with my spirit board and my pendulum mm -hmm. and you know it's important I don't want anything of evil or malintent to come through so um that's something that I that I do and it works and it's pretty great I've I've I personally don't believe um I haven't witnessed anything negative uh-huh so I've had people come through that had suicides and stuff like that, but I haven't had any negative entities, which is good. So I think I'm doing something right. <laughs> right. Well, it almost sounds like your method of grounding is not just grounding yourself, but also creating a container for the process oh, yeah. to work through. Absolutely. So it's the sacred space that you're creating to kind of protect yourself during the work. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I use um, Palo Santo, mm -hmm. you know, uh, around my house and um, I use crystals. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned people. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> um, you mentioned that you have a spirit guide. How I'm curious about that for you. Like, have have you had different spirit guides? Do you have multiple spirit guides? Do you have like your one guide that's kind of your go-to? And how long has that being been with you? Okay, so my whole life, I've had two with me. Um, well, no, I wouldn't say my whole, well, I guess I could say my whole life. So my grandmother, Rose, is one, mm -hmm. and she always pops through. She has something to say all the time. And then my main spirit guide that I knew in a past life, her name is Ariel. Uh-huh. But I also have others come through and areas that I need to work on in my life that pop in, leave, pop in, leave. But my main are two. And Ariel, I realized I had Ariel my whole life through my mentor. Oh, okay. And then she helped me connect with her. And when you say she was in a past life with you, was she a person in a past life with you or was she a spirit yes. guide? Oh, okay. Okay. She was a person in a past life with me and um, she kind of presents herself like as a flapper. Uh-huh. <laughs> so she's got the short do and like a wavy dress. Um, but that's like my main go-to. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, I heard you also mention that you call in like Mother Mary and God and like ask for this. Are, are you Christian? Is that how you identify your spirituality or your religion? Um, I grew up Roman Catholic. Uh-huh. And then um, during my spiritual awakening, awakening, I interpret both. So I'm a spiritualist, but I still, you know, am Roman Catholic, but I don't go to church every Sunday anymore. And has there been any conflict for that with you or has it been, has it felt like a really easy meld between the two? Oh my God. So easy. It just feels right. Yeah. yeah. It feels totally right. And it feels totally positive and, and, and it's great. It's great. I love it. And your family was okay. They weren't like, what you're doing does not jive with our belief system. No, not at all. I mean, my dad was like, oh, come on, this is all fake, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> until, until when my grandma Sadie passed away, there was two people laid out in the, the funeral parlor. So my grandma was on one side and the woman was on the other. And uh -huh. I said, dad, grandma's in the wrong dress. And she was in New Jersey and I'm in Connecticut. So I didn't pick out her clothes, didn't know what was going on. And my grandmother standing by her casket saying, this is a horrible color on me. And she was, she was a dress designer at Kleinfeld's in Manhattan. <laughs> so she's flipping out. And my dad's like, what are you talking about? That's the dress we picked out for her. And I said, dad, it's not the dress that you picked out for grandma. And sure enough, they switched the dresses. Oh my God. I know. And she was wearing the wrong one. And my dad was like, hmm. <laughs> 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 and then another instance, um, also that grandmother when she passed two months later I found two new cousins that my family knew we never had 
through how? It was actually through Ancestry. Okay. And then I, I knew that she had a brother. It was my dad's like second cousin who had babies when she was younger and nobody knew that she had two babies. And then I found her and then I said, listen, like the inner knowing you have a brother. And then we wound up finding him. Oh, wow. So then my dad was like, you know what? Okay. I believe you now. <laughs> so on the family <laughs> forefront that that's what it took to get my dad to believe me. <laughs> but your mom was on board already. Yeah, she was on board and she loves hearing from her family. And did anybody else in your family have these gifts? Yeah, my mom's side comes from a long line of gifts. Oh. Um, yeah, long, long, long line. Um, my mom had a few things happen to her um, in Brooklyn, New York. You know, look at that lady across the street all dressed in black with rosary beads. And we're like, nobody is there. Uh -huh. But like she can see her. My grandfather, Tommy, passed away. He said, you're going to know I'm with you when I pass. He goes, time's going to stop and the lights are going to go out. The whole street in Brooklyn, all the lights went out and the clock stopped in the car. Oh, wow. So it's just like little things. But I mean, it, I mean, people <laughs> would think it's a <laughs> People would think it's a big thing, but you know, to me, it's the little things like that, that make, that make me who I am today, I guess, you know, and, and that's what it comes down to. It's basically more people are in tune to that side and you're either born with it or maybe you're not, or you come into it. But I think everybody is born with an intuition yeah. and, you know, I think everybody is born with empathy, you know, mm -hmm. that's a big part of being a human being. And um, it's all about how you hone it and how you learn how to how to do things with it and so help what, people. What has been your biggest, I guess, um, like learning curve in all of this? Finding out who I really am. Wow. Say more about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I was kind of like a lost, a lost person, you know, growing up, I felt like I always had to try so hard to fit in. And I always felt like people were judging me or, you know, anything that I did. And, and when I got my spirituality, I, I was like, wow, like, this is me. This is who I am. I'm supposed to help other people. This is why I was born. Uh -huh. And that's, that's what I do. Like so many people today are trying to find their life purpose, right? I'm just so blessed and grateful that I found mine through this. Uh huh. And it and was that, a big eye opener for me. Yeah. So, it, yeah. what trajectory were you on before this, or were you on one? <laughs> nah, not really. <laughs> 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 not really. <laughs> okay. So there wasn't like a career path you were on that got interrupted as you started to hone your skills. I mean, like a little bit, you know, there was always like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then, you know, I did the whole college thing and um, I'm actually um, working in an engineering field now too. So okay. you know, yeah, this is not full time for me, but it's, mo it's most of my time. And, um, and this is me. Like, I feel like this is home for me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. You know, and I've helped, I've helped so many people and it feels so good. Is there one reading out of all the readings you've done that stands out to you as being kind of like your favorite? Can I ask you that? <laughs> yeah, you can ask me that. Um, you know, I've never actually thought about that before. Um, there's one that has always, I mean, obviously it's like, you know, with the children that pass, they stick with me a lot yeah. and they have a hard time leaving me too. So that's kind of hard to deal with, but, um, that stuck with me. Okay. So I did a group reading for about 12 people. And so I was like, you know, I, I'm going to, I don't know if I could read everybody tonight, but I wound up reading everybody and then some spirits after them. Uh -huh. And I think the, the husbands that didn't believe I made them all cry. And I think that's like, that was like, okay, <laughs> like I'm doing something right here. <laughs> like I'm uh -huh. helping this and like, you know, like, I was doing their facial expressions. Sometimes, sometimes I turn into the spirit. Uh huh. So that that made them cry. But I think that stuck with me. And then actually solving a woman's family murder. Okay. Was one that stuck with me as well. And is that why they had somebody had come to you, or it just happened to be a byproduct of the reading? 
it was a byproduct of the reading and I, I drew it out for her and you know, I didn't, everything was spot on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that sometimes the kids have a hard time leaving you. What is, what is your process of kind of releasing what has come? Meditation. Okay. So it's more, it's just kind of going back into that sacred space and, and really yeah. envisioning them, what, going into the light or moving away from you? Just moving away from me. Go back, uh -huh. go back home, you know, your home now, go back there. Mm -hmm. um, with the adults, I have no problem saying, okay, that's it. Thank you so much. You know, I appreciate everything that you've given me and helping, you know, whoever I'm helping. And usually they just go, but with the kids, they have somebody here to talk to. Uh -huh. so they, have a, they have a harder time leaving, but mm -hmm. they, they go. I had one that stuck around for a couple of days. So that was a little bit difficult, but I did a lot of, um, a lot of prayer and a lot of meditation and he wound up going on. Mm -hmm. And do you, do people ever come to you for like house clearings or talk about how they feel like there's somebody following them who may or may not be connected to them? Yep. I have done, um, house clearings before and, um, yeah, I've gotten spirits away that, that needed to be taken away through clearing and through prayer. And, um, you know, it's just through my beliefs itself. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah. Have you ever been afraid? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's so weird. No, it's not. I mean, I've talked to other, I've been interviewing other people and, you know, yeah. I think that um, for a lot of folks who feel that connection and are comfortable in it, it's not scary and they don't fear it. And, you know, even when people come in who might be mad or whatever, it's, there, there's it not a fear. Feels, it feels better to me to talk to them than everybody else here on this plane. Why? It's just, they're more at peace. They're, you know, they're, they're more, their vibration is so much higher uh -huh. and it just brings my vibration to a higher level and it makes me feel happy. It's like endorphins that just rush through your body. Okay. That's what it feels like for me. Okay. Um, I'm curious cause you had mentioned that your spirit guide is somebody you knew in a past life. So you believe in past lives. Yes, I do Reiki. Okay. Yeah, and I could, um, through that Reiki session, I could um, channel their past lives. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I'm pretty old. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> like, you've done this, you've been around, around a few times, huh? Yeah, I've been around a few times. You know, and they say with past lives that each part of your, your soul is, each part of the soul that you have now, a little bit of your past life is taken in there. So, if you ever get deja vu. Yep. Oh yeah. That's part of a past life. What I feel, you know, and, um, I think it has a, it's a huge part of who you are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, isn't that the point we keep reincarnating and having yeah. this experience to kind of evolve further or learn lessons that we might not have learned in the last life? Yeah, absolutely. And you take that little piece with you every single time that you reincarnate. And I totally believe in that. And I also totally believe that if you don't reincarnate, your soul stays where it is. Uh-huh. Sure. So I think that there's, there's whole different stages to it. Okay. So is there an end game? In the end game, thing? An, end game as in, an end game as in nothing when you die? Well, yeah, or like joining with source or, I mean, everybody's got a different theory. I guess I'm just curious what your, your beliefs are on that. Yeah, no, it keeps going. Okay. Keeps going. Okay. Yeah. Do you have kids? I do. I have two. And do either of them have any of the same gifts that you have? My daughter, no, but my son who is 13 is a total empath. Ah, Okay. But of course, I don't, I don't, um, you know, do my readings in front of them. I don't, um, I want them to figure it out on their own. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part of growing up too. Um, but clearly, if you knew him, you'd be like, whoa, total empath. You know, he feels other people's emotions. He cares about what other people feeling. He cares about what other people think of him. It's, um, you know, true empath. Mm -hmm. But, well, if, you know, 
he, he did say when he was younger that there's a man standing by my bed. And I said, okay, that's your grandpa, your great grandfather was my grandfather. And, um, that was that it was really no more questions. He wasn't scared. Uh-huh. It wasn't, you know, he, he still sucked the light off and it was fine. Like, I think he felt comfortable by it, mm-hmm. but then he dropped it and it was like never brought up again. So I don't bring it up. I don't want to push it. I don't want to boil the pot. So even though you don't do your readings in front of the kids, do they know mm-hmm. what you do? Is it a, my like- daughter? My daughter's only four. Oh, she's little. Yeah. So <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't, she could care too less what I'm doing. Right. She just wants to call her or blow bubbles. Um, but my son, um, yeah, he totally knows what I'm doing and he doesn't say anything bad about it. It's just like, okay. You know, and I'll say, yeah, I'm, you know, I have to do a reading, you know, just stay in your room for a half an hour. And he's, all right. <laughs> okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's so, he's so easy. So, I mean, on that aspect, um, it's working out pretty good. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And I'm just thinking how lucky he is that he has a mom mm-hmm. who understands what his gifts are. Mm-hmm. So that if he needs support or guidance, you know, he's got someone there and he, de- he, even though you're saying he has to kind of figure that out on his own, he doesn't right. have to figure it out on his own in like a sink or swim. Support. Kind of way. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's support. And like, when I know he needs extra support, I yeah. give it to him without him even knowing that I know that he needs that extra support. So, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a good balance. So like, right. I'm helping him without him even knowing it, I guess. Which is always better when you have a teenager to help them without them mm-hmm. knowing <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah <laughs> totally um I'm I'm wondering about people who you know I mean you were saying everybody's born with intuition and I totally believe that do you have any tricks or tips or exercises that you recommend for people who are trying to strengthen their intuition yep to strengthen your intuition Meditate, 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 meditate. That's okay. the biggest advice that I can give anybody and everybody. Um, you balance your whole body, all of your chakras, every single molecule in your body when you meditate, and you can just focus on that one thing if you wanted to. And it, you'll grow from it. And when you say meditate, what does that mean to you? Because there's so many ways to meditate, right? And you know. Right. So what yeah. does that mean um, for you? So for people that are just starting out, I would recommend guided meditation that you can just Google, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when you get better at it, you can just sit and do it by yourself. And meditating to me is just sitting down on the ground with my back straight up, my hands on my knees, and just focusing on the breath going in and out of my nose. Uh-huh. And then if I want to focus on one thing, like my third eye, I'm going to put my focus there. Uh And I'll do a whole meditation on my third eye. But I think a great way to start off is guided meditation. Yeah. And you could do it at yoga facilities too, or, you know, whatever you're into. Right. So finding an anchor to help kind of, so your mind doesn't go too far wandering. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And you have to, you have to do what's right for you too. find your balance in life and you have to find what works for you because my meditation might not work for you guys. Right. You know, so you have to find that. And that's part of your journey. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I, I do yeah. think that, you know, it's nothing is one size fits all. <laughs> right. No, not at all. And yeah. it, everything takes work and everything is a process, but you have to have the strength and the willpower to do it. And you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what I want to know about is what, what are the offerings that you're bringing into the world at this point? Like, I, I know you do readings, but what, what types of readings, what does that look like? All of that. Yep. So Facebook is a huge platform today. And mm-hmm. to all of my out of state people, I do Facebook messenger readings. So like I'll offer a mini reading, which is like a paragraph right in their messenger um, or a longer one, which is like a full standard page right to their messenger. Um, People can FaceTime me. People can call me. I can do one-on-one at my house. I can do a half an hour. I can do an hour. I do Reiki. I can do cleansing. (laughs) So I offer kind of like a little bit of everything. Uh And I get so close to my clients too. I wind up getting friendships with them and it's just great experience. Yeah. Um, If people wanted to contact you, what's the best way to track you down? 
Yep. I um, have a website and um, I also have a Facebook page um, at reading uh, Stephanie Manoia and Psychic Readings. And I have a group called um, Psychic Vortex okay. on, on Facebook. And is that like uh, a membership group or is it just a group? It's a, just a group. Anybody who wants to join, it's, um, you know, giving spiritual advice, um, how to contact your guides, basically anything and everything. Um, it's a space for people to talk about what they're going through. If you miss a loved one, you can contact me through there. Um, and that's about it. Okay. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have? Or that you think I, my gosh, I'm talking a lot about myself. Um, Right? Well, that's the point. (laughs) (laughs) Um, no, I just, um, you know, all I'm hoping for is just a better world and just for everybody to just be happy and just live your lives and have a good time. And that's it. That's that's a great thing to hope for. (laughs) I know. I'm kind of hoping for that too. Especially these days. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions I have for today. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys. Take care. (laughs) Bye. Bye.